Hi, today I'll talk about a fat shedding diet secret, but before I begin, let me ask you a question. Have you ever asked yourself why are you fat? Every time you look into the mirror, wondering why people out there are having a nice summer body with full confidence while you're still struggling with your recently sized up t-shirt, you might even be wondering, are you going to be like them one day? Are there any chances for you to change? Well, of course there are. However, summer bodies don't come with ease. People spend time and effort to make themselves look good. But what's important is that you're healthy from the inside out. When I say fat burn, the first thing that comes into your mind will be exercise. Yes, of course you need to exercise to have a nice summer body. But do you know that our eating habit affects our body the most? Having an unhealthy lifestyle not only slows down your metabolism, but also brings you chronic diseases. With a slow metabolic system, you can even gain weight by only drinking water. This is also the reason why some people slim down at a very slow rate, but gain all the weight back in one night. Slimming down is good, but slimming down healthily is the key point here. We want you to look into your health first, instead of focusing on how you're going to slim down. Now, let's talk about the fat shedding diet secret. We all know that our bodies need a certain amount of fat for optimal functioning, but we need to know what are the right kinds of fat to consume in moderation. Some fats should be avoided at all costs, but some fats are actually good for you. Bad fats increase cholesterol and risk of diseases, but good fats protect your heart and are essential to your physical and emotional health. But the question is, how do you identify which is which? So, let's learn about fats. Basically, there are two groups of fats, saturated fats and unsaturated fats, and within each group are more types of fats. Unsaturated fats are the good fats. They include polyunsaturated fatty acids and monounsaturated fats. These fats can help lower your cholesterol levels and reduce your risk of heart disease if you learn to eat them in moderation in replacement of saturated or trans fats. Polyunsaturated fats are mostly found in vegetable oils. Omega-3 in fatty fish and walnuts are really beneficial to health. It helps lower both blood cholesterol level and decrease cardiovascular disease. Monounsaturated fats are a good source of antioxidant vitamin E. These types of fats are typically liquid at room temperature but solidify if refrigerated. Olive oil is a great choice. Mediterranean countries consume lots of it as its dietary component is credited with the low levels of heart disease in those countries. Saturated fats are the bad fats found in animal products and in vegetable fats that are liquid at room temperature such as coconut and palm. Saturated fats are bad if consumed in a large scale. You should keep it under 10% of your total calories. Let's talk about the evil fats here. We've been hearing a lot about trans fatty acids or trans fats these days. Trans fats are even more dangerous than saturated fats. These evil fats have absolutely no positive benefit to the human body in any way, yet they've been scientifically proven to harm the body in many ways. Trans fats can increase your bad or LDL cholesterol levels, lower your good or HDL cholesterol levels, cause heart disease, strokes, and diabetes. Artificial trans fats are extensively used in frying, baked goods like cookies, crackers, icings, packaged snacks, and certain margarines. You're probably consuming trans fats on a daily basis. Considering the fact that it's unanimously agreed upon by everyone in the nutrition field that trans fats are really bad for your health, you should either consume minimal trans fats in your diet or pretty much avoid completely for best results. Now that you've learned about fats, it's time to learn how to design your own diet to shed those extra pounds. Creating a weight loss diet that caters to your own taste preferences is the golden rule to a successful diet plan. Don't go for an extreme diet plan just because you're desperate for a drastic change in your weight. It's unrealistic and you rarely get to your goal. Ideally, small changes in a healthy direction over time works magic on your body. Follow these simple magical steps to creating your own fat shedding diet. Identify your current diet. Keep a careful diary log of your normal food intake for seven days. Eat as per usual, but keep record of what you have consumed each day, how much at each meal or snack. For example, how many bowls of cereal? One or two? How much milk? What type of milk? And then you calculate the amount of calories you intake for each meal, add all seven days total calories intake, and divide by seven. This will give you a good idea of the caloric intake you're currently consuming at your current body weight. Design a new diet. Dream big, but start small. Be realistic and take small steps towards big success. A safe weight loss that will most likely be permanently consistent is one pound a week. Do your math. One pound is equal to 3,500 calories. 
3,500 divided by 7 days a week equals 500 calories each day. Identify your daily average calorie count and subtract 500 calories. However, keep in mind that you should not lower your calorie intake to less than 1,500 without advice from a professional registered dietitian. Play of substitution. Don't quit food. Learn to substitute healthier foods that you like and reduce portions of high calorie foods that you like so you can achieve the new lowered daily calorie count. Let's just say you love burgers and almost can't live without them. It's okay. Eat a burger. But instead of eating the whole thing as is, lower its calorie count by cutting the portion size or substituting a certain ingredient. Eat half of it rather than the whole. Opt for lean chicken meat rather than fattening beef patty. A sprinkle of chili flakes instead of oozing chili sauce. The easiest and most possible way to achieve huge calorie savings is by changing the way your favorite foods are prepared. Avoid frying and rich or thick sauces. Opt for steam, bake, broil, roast, or even better, just eat it fresh. Next, I'd like to share with you the secret to staying full. Are you always hungry? Do you eat more than three meals a day but still feel hungry all the time? Have you ever wondered why? The secret is to reach for foods that satisfy your tummy instead of ones that only cater to your appetite but leave you hungry for more. In a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, researchers found that some high-calorie foods, like bakery treats, not only don't make you full, but they actually trigger your appetite. In the research experiment, participants who were fed a meal of such foods actually ended up eating twice as much over the rest of the day, 3,000 calories in all, as compared to those participants fed a low-fat and low-calorie meal. Now, here's the deal. Find fitter fast food. Look for low-fat, low-calorie, and fulfilling options. Brown rice, grilled skinless lean meat, whole wheat bread, salads, they're extremely filling actually, soup, and best yet, plain water goes along with any meal and you'll feel full for sure. So, that's it. The ultimate secret to a fat shedding diet. Learn about your food, eat smart, and you'll be shedding those fats away with not just a healthy body, but also a happy tummy. In this video, you'll learn how to get rid of love handles. So, what are the workouts for women? Firstly, crunches on an exercise ball. What are the steps? Sit on a well-inflated exercise ball. For more information on what diameter ball to use, read Ball Size Matters. Place your hands behind your head and walk your feet away from the ball so your torso starts to roll onto the ball. The ball should support your hips and the curve of your lower back. Your legs should form a bridge with your knees bent at right angles. Exhale and lift your upper body by about 45 degrees, pulling the deep abs in toward the spine, and return to the starting position. Don't yank your neck and do 25 reps. The second exercise is Pilates 100s. Start by lying on your back with your legs in tabletop position, hips and knees at right angles. Engage your deep abs to round your lower spine into the floor. Make sure you're not pooching your abs, which means you're just working the top layer of abs, which is a Pilates no-no. Exhale and lift your upper back off the floor until the bottom tips of your shoulder blades skim the floor. Straighten your legs to a 45 degree angle, but make sure your low back is staying connected to the floor. Reach your arms towards your feet. Your arms will be about 2 inches off the floor. Pump your arms up and down with a small range of motion, keeping your elbows straight. Inhale for 5 arm pumps and exhale for 5 arm pumps. That completes one set or cycle. Repeat the cycle 9 more times for a total of 100 pumps. Keep your upper body stable while your arms pump. The third exercise is bicycle crunches. Lie flat on the floor with your lower back pressed to the ground. Pull your abs down to also target your deep abs. Interlace your fingers and put your hands behind your head. Bring your knees in towards your chest and lift your shoulder blades off the ground. Straighten your right leg out to about a 45 degree angle to the ground while turning your upper body to the left, bringing your right elbow toward the left knee. Make sure your rib cage is moving and not just your elbows. Now switch sides and do the same motion on the other side to complete one rep and to create the pedaling motion. Do this exercise with slow and controlled motion. Do 10 to 20 reps. The fourth exercise is twisting side plank. Come into a side plank on your right side with your feet stacked one on top of the other and your weight on your right elbow with your fingers reaching away from your body palm down. Place your left arm behind your head and inhale to prepare. Exhale and pull your navel to your spine to engage your deep abs and rotate your left rib cage toward the floor. 
Stay there for a second and deepen your abdominal connection by pulling your navel in towards your spine even more. Return to the starting position and repeat seven more times for a total of eight reps, then switch sides. Repeat series again on both sides. The fifth exercise is the Russian twist. Sit on the ground with your knees bent and your heels about a foot from your bum. Lean slightly back without rounding your spine at all. It is really important and difficult to keep your back straight, but don't let it curve. Place your arms straight out in front of you with your hands one on top of the other. Your hands should be level with the bottom of your rib cage. Pull your navel to your spine and twist slowly to the left. The movement is not large and comes from the ribs rotating, not from your arms swinging. Inhale through center and rotate to the right. This completes one rep. Do 16 full rotations. To get washboard abs, the best exercise is hanging ab curls. Using a pull-up bar, get a good grip with your palms facing out or toward each other. Start with your legs hanging straight down, and on an exhale, pull your abs towards your spine and bend your knees, lifting them towards your chest. Without swinging, slowly lower your knees, returning to a straight leg position. Repeat for a total of 10 to 12 reps. Next, we'll talk about the best exercises for men. The first is, of course, sit-ups. Lie flat on your back on the floor with your knees bent and your legs secured under a piece of heavy furniture. I'm assuming that you're doing this routine at home. Place your hands by your chest. Flexing your abdominals, raise your torso until you are nearly in a sitting position. Retaining tension on the abs, lower your torso to the beginning position. Remember to maintain full control throughout the movement. Also, avoid the temptation to rock back and forth. The second exercise is leg raises. Lie flat on your back on the floor with your legs straight out in front of you. Place your hands at your sides by the floor for support. Flexing your lower abdominals, raise your legs until they're perpendicular to the floor. Retaining tension on the abs, lower your legs to the beginning position. Again, maintain full control throughout the movement. Avoid the temptation to let your legs drop on the negative portion of the movement. The third exercise is knees in. Sit on the floor or on the edge of a chair or exercise bench with your legs extended in front of you and your hands holding onto the sides for support. Keeping your knees together, pull your knees in towards your chest until you can go no further. Keeping the tension on your lower ab muscles, return to the start position and repeat the movement until you have completed your set. The fourth exercise is toe touchers. Sit on the floor or on the edge of a chair or exercise bench with your legs extended in front of you and your hands holding onto the sides for support. Simultaneously bring your legs up as far as possible while at the same time bringing your torso towards them. Return to the start position and repeat the movement until you have completed your set. Note: This is a modified version of a V-up. In a true V-up, your starting position is lying down on the floor and bringing yourself up with no arm support. The fifth exercise is crunches. Lie flat on your back on the floor with your legs in front of you bent at the knees. Place your hands by your chest. At this time, raise your shoulders and torso as far as possible from the ground in a curling movement without raising your back from the floor. Retaining tensions on the abs, bring your torso to the starting position. To slim down, you have to alter your energy balance. There are simply two ways to accomplish this. Either take in less calories or spend more energy through exercise. The easiest way to boil down your consumption is merely cut back on the size of your meals and or the total high calorie foods you eat. This doesn't mean that you have to give up any certain food. Bear in mind that there's more to a beautiful body than just utilizing effective wellness products. You need to be on a total preventative healthcare and wellness program that involves diet, nutrition, making a point that your body gets the proper nutrients, and exercise. Optimum body functions today require any added help they can get, as most people don't go through the trouble to consume foods that are healthy and beneficial for them. Therefore, there is a need to make a conscious effort to source out essential vitamin types of foods and include them into the daily diet plan for hoped good conditions. With so much talk of healthy foods and what you should be eating, the foods that are the worst for us can get overlooked. The reason it's so hard to avoid these kinds of foods is because the things that make them bad also make them taste good. Fatty foods typically taste good, so do sweet and salty ones, which means a lot of the foods you love are likely not the best things you can have. But you don't have to resort to living like Tom Hanks and Castaway. There are plenty of foods that you can turn to that taste amazing and won't jeopardize your well-being. It's about learning why certain foods are bad so you can make better choices on a day-to-day -day basis. That being said, here are some dietary landmines to watch out for and step around. 
A new study published in the journal Preventing Chronic Disease revealed that 84% of packaged foods that listed zero grams trans fat on their nutrition facts label still had partially hydrogenated oil, the main dietary source of trans fat, in the ingredient list. Current laws allow companies to round down fewer than 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving to zero. The good news? The amount of trans fat we eat has dropped in the past 30 years, according to a recent study published in the Journal of the American Heart Association. Men are consuming 32% less trans fat and women 35% less than they were in 1980. Still, 1.9% of men's daily calories and 1.7% of women's daily calories come from trans fat today. The American Heart Association recommends limiting trans fat to no more than 1% of total calories consumed. Even a few daily grams of these fats increase bad cholesterol, decrease good cholesterol, and clog arteries. And Harvard researchers estimate that trans fats cause up to 228,000 cases of heart disease and 50,000 deaths annually. Since 2 grams is the most you should have in a day, allowing food with 0.5 grams or less to call themselves trans fat free is a real problem. Simply said, you're best off avoiding trans fat containing foods completely. I'll also show you some quick examples of food rich in trans fat that you might not even be aware of. The first is non-dairy coffee creamer. Half a gram of trans fat in creamer can quickly turn into multiple since consumers tend to use more than the serving size of a teaspoon per cup. And the typical American coffee drinker guzzles an average of three cups of joe per day. On many zero trans fat labels, you can find partially hydrogenated oils as the second or third ingredient listed. The second one is peanut butter. Some companies use partially hydrogenated oils to achieve a long shelf life and creamy texture, so check the label. To be safe, opt for the natural variety. Although it's chunkier, it's also healthier and normally made with just salt and peanuts, not oils loaded with trans fat. You might think that avoiding usual pizza is good, but frozen pizza is equally bad. Trans fat sneaks into the dough of many frozen pizzas, with about 0.3 grams in just one slice. San Diego mother of two, Katie Simpson, sued Nestle for $5 million last year over the use of trans fat in its frozen pizzas sold by DiGiorno, Stouffer's, and California Pizza Kitchen. The case was dismissed since she knowingly purchased and consumed the pizza. One solution? Make your own pie at home. Popcorn's unhealthy as well. I know it's your Friday night movie staple, but microwavable popcorn puts the spotlight on trans fats. The true culprits are the toppings. Butter flavoring can include 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving, while caramel flavoring can contain as many as 1.5 grams. Some extra buttery varieties can have up to 15 grams of trans fats per bag, which is all too easy to inhale in one sitting. Stay away from the microwave popcorn, says Napoli. Just do the old-fashioned air pop or use an actual oil to pop the kernels in. You might love them, but packaged cookies are the devils. Even the beloved Girl Scout cookies still sneak some trans fat in, despite a label that says trans fat free. You may be able to justify those because they only happen a few times a year, but check to see if your favorite store-bought cookies are made with partially hydrogenated cooking oils. Chances are, they are, including Chips Ahoy and Keebler, although some brands like Oreos now use high oleic oils instead so they can provide shelf-stable cookies at a reasonable cost. Lastly, margarine. Margarine consumption boomed during the butter shortages of World War II, with even Eleanor Roosevelt promoting it as her toast topping of choice. But it's a recipe for trans fat overload. To create the creamy spread, liquid vegetable oils are blasted with hydrogen. The more solid the margarine, the more it's been hydrogenated. Many labels claim to have zero grams of trans fat, but if the label lists partially hydrogenated oils, those small amounts of trans fat can add up when you slather margarine on your food. High fructose corn syrup, or HFCS, is an ingredient that didn't exist before 1960 but has a strong appeal to food manufacturers because it's so very sweet, cheap to make, and easy to store. According to David Zinzenko in The Abs Diet, the human body doesn't have a shutoff switch for HFCS the way it does with real sugar. This leads us to keep drinking a cola or eating sweet treats long after we would have stopped if they were naturally sweetened. Those who pay attention to what they eat may have noticed high fructose corn syrup creeping into an alarming number of foods in the supermarket aisle. Corn subsidies and other trends have pushed this relatively unhealthy substance into many of the general food groups that we shop for on a regular basis. Here are some of the popular food and drink items that contain high fructose corn syrup, an element with a lot of sugar that has been known to contribute to diabetes and other conditions when eaten in excess. Soft drinks are packed with HFCS. It's no surprise to most of us that soda is chock full of high fructose corn syrup. 
To those who aren't used to the drink, the stuff can be almost sickeningly sweet. Even diet varieties can have a large amount of this sweetener. Add the fact that soda machines can be found on the street corner, in the lobbies of buildings, and in almost any public space, and it's easy to see why obesity and sugar-related conditions are such a problem in today's world. Also, sauces and salad dressing will hurt your waistline. Most ketchup ends up on french fries, and few stop to consider that it's actually acting to make the fries unhealthier. That's because it uses high fructose corn syrup as its number three ingredient, at least in a bottle of America's number one best-selling ketchup, Heinz. There's four grams of total sugar, and the majority of that will come from HFCS. You might think yogurt is good, but you're dead wrong. Although many dieters add yogurt to their daily menu, they'd better watch out at the sweeteners it contains, with many of the brands using high fructose corn syrup to make them taste good. Going with a light version of yogurt no doubt means you're getting an artificial sweetener, which can be just as bad. Pay extra attention to processed snacks, too. There are other items that the average consumer wouldn't think of as HFCS candidates. Look at the labels for things like breaded meats or processed potato items, and make sure that the sweetener is not lurking somewhere on that label. Monosodium glutamate, also known as MSG, is a commonly used food enhancer whose taste is described as umami-like. Taste is usually divided into four categories, sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. Glutamate is said to have a fifth unique taste called umami, which is described as the savory flavor of meats. MSG is used to enhance this so-called umami flavor and is known to have negative side effects even when ingested in small amounts. Since MSG is found so frequently in processed foods, it is very hard to avoid except in cases when the packaging specifically states that the product contains no MSG. Even then, manufactured free glutamic acid can be found in different forms, such as torula yeast. MSG, torula yeast, yeast extracts, and hydrolyzed proteins can raise levels of glutamate, which in turn overstimulates neurons. Synthetically produced glutamates may have different names, but are all essentially MSG. Some common glutamates strongly related to MSG include hydrolyzed proteins, autolyzed yeasts, protein concentrates, yeast extract, glutamic acid, and the list goes on. These glutamates can be found in very common grocery items such as low-fat yogurt, canned soups, chips, and most ranch and cheese-flavored foods. In a 2014 study published in Life Science, researchers found that young rats treated with MSG were more susceptible to developing anxiety and depressive behaviors. Examples of food rich in MSG are vegan breakfast sausage, bacon bits, veggie burger and nuggets, and fried food. Walk into any big grocery store and you'll find that artificial sweeteners are everywhere. They're tucked into soft drinks, baked goods, and fruit juices to make them taste sweet without the extra calories. Most products that contain artificial sweeteners are usually labeled as diet or reduced sugar, but not all are. You can even find some in foods that claim to have natural ingredients. Because they're not always clearly labeled on food packaging, consumers may not realize that they're eating them. Artificial sweeteners have been under the spotlight for decades now, as health food advocates point out that they come with a list of side effects, much like a drug. The side effects that are claimed by those against sweeteners like aspartame include some really severe conditions, such as depression, insomnia, blindness, tinnitus, hives, and a contributing factor to things like Alzheimer's and MS. Examples of foods rich in artificial sweeteners are light food and beverages with the word light or low sugar, diet coke, and packaged snacks. High levels of sodium, or salt, can really wreak havoc on your body. Not only does it cause you to retain water, but it also increases blood pressure and can lead to complications with the heart. Almost all heart patients are put on a low sodium diet, whether they suffered a heart attack, stroke, or are at risk for them. It makes sense to watch your sodium levels long before it reaches the point of a doctor telling you to do so or forcing you onto a diet to help save your life. Foods high in sodium are cheese, salty snacks, frozen meals, bread, and tortillas. Foods high in calories can really add to your waistline in a hurry if you're not careful. The reason they're so sneaky is because you can consume hundreds of calories quickly and not even be aware of it. A popular dieting theory is that the fewer calories taken in, the more weight you'll lose, all else being equal. That's why you see people going on low-calorie diets and trying to burn calories in the gym. You don't have to go to extremes, but minding the calories you consume will lead to a healthier you. Examples of food choices high in calories are pasta dishes, chocolate, and chia seeds. It's not as if you have to go low carb or no carb, but you should still keep an eye on your carbohydrate intake. In fact, there's even a recommended daily allowance set at 130 grams. Why are too many carbs unhealthy? Foods high in carbohydrates will be digested quickly and tend to increase your blood sugar levels. This causes a release of insulin, which produces glycogen, which gets stored in the body as fat. 
They're also responsible for making you feel hungry again quickly and can lead to more eating and overeating than would otherwise happen. Examples are bagels, coffee drinks, and movie popcorn. Have you ever seen some weight loss TV program where some contestants lose a big amount of weight only to gain it back almost right away? Ever wondered how and why that happened? It's all because of the yo-yo effect. What's the yo-yo effect? Yo-yo effect, also known as weight cycling, is the cyclical loss and gain of weight resembling the up and down motion of a yo-yo. Losing weight quickly by doing a diet plan, then regaining it falling back into your eating habits or failing to stick to your exercise routine will lead you towards the yo-yo effect. A classic yo-yo dieter's weight goes up and down but rarely stays in one place for long. People who do diets without consistency tend to fall into a vicious circle. After each weight loss, the weight regain that follows is worse than the previous one, which then makes them diet even more severely than last time. Such a yo-yo effect can lead you to put on more than 20 times of your normal weight, or worst case, obesity. So, what are the causes? Number one, too difficult diets. A diet plan that is too restrictive to follow over a long period of time. Number two, overexertive exercises. This causes burnout and difficulty to keep it up in the long run. Number three, unbalanced diet. The same nutritional mistakes will be reproduced a few weeks or months later. Number four, Extreme dieting. This causes depression and fatigue, resulting in difficulty to sustain the willpower to continue. The common reasons of yo-yo dieting seen above are what drive yo-yo dieters to eating more than they would have before dieting, causing them to rapidly regain weight. When psychological factors kick in, it's almost impossible for dieters to sustain their willpower. Therefore, old eating habits and lack of exercise cause fat and weight to bounce back as much or even more. The yo-yo effect is dangerous. Why? Because the regained weight is increasingly difficult to lose. Imagine you're struggling to lose 10 pounds and now you have to lose 20 pounds due to the rebounding weight. Anyone will go crazy. Rebounding occurs because our body remembers the effects of deprivation caused by secessions of diets over a long period of time, therefore resulting in storing more fats in reserve to prepare for future diets. It is a progressive development of obesity. Your weight will bounce back in an extreme manner and the recovering process is twice as difficult as the previous diet process. You'll feel out of control and lose grasp on the long run, thus resulting in a rocketing weight gain leading to obesity. Besides, emotional distress leads to depressive disorders. The suppression from previous extreme diets are bound to cause you depressive disorders like insomnia, depression, dysthymia, bipolar. Such disorders will interfere with your daily life, affecting your normal functioning and cause pain to you and your loved ones. Thus, you'll have a higher possibility of having high blood pressure, high cholesterol, gallbladder disease, or cardiovascular disease, arteritis, infarction, etc. Inconsistent food intake, unbalanced nutrition, on and off extreme exercise workouts, and emotional instability will eventually drive your body haywire. Your body won't be able to familiarize itself with all the changes done within an inconsistent time frame and manner. All of the above dangers will eventually lead to the possibility of a shortened lifespan. There's nothing wrong with being ambitious and eager to achieve your ideal weight. Having the desire and the drive to meet your goal is half the battle in getting there. Be flexible and learn from your mistakes. If you try an exercise regimen or a new food plan that you don't enjoy or find hard to sustain, then try something else. Bear in mind that your goal should not be to lose as much weight as you can or as quickly as you can. You need to establish healthy patterns of eating and exercise that'll help you lose weight while at the same time having long sustainability. You need to realize that trying to do too much too quickly could be your undoing. Be realistic on the amount of changes you're able to make at once. Keep track on your progress and find sources of support as it'll be helpful for you to overcome difficulties. Exercise buddies are great and some people find a lot of value in the support they get through online communities. The most crucially essential factor in solving the yo-yo dilemma has to do with changing your behavior. Practice eating smaller, more frequent meals. Plan your food intake. Include hunger-fighting protein at each meal and snack. Plan ahead, keep track, enlist help. A quick sprint might get you to the finish line if you're lucky, but chances are you're going to be left exhausted and out of the game. When it comes to successful weight loss, slow and steady definitely wins the race. In this video, you'll learn about easy yoga practice. Yoga is an ancient Indian philosophy that dates back thousands of years. 
It was designed as a path to spiritual enlightenment, but in modern times, the physical aspects of Hatha Yoga have found huge popularity as a gentle form of exercise and stress management. There are many different varieties of yoga, but each one essentially relies on structured poses, asanas, practiced with breath awareness. Researchers have discovered that the regular practice of yoga may produce many health benefits, including fitness and normalization of blood pressure. Yoga is a renowned antidote to stress. Over time, yoga practitioners report lower levels of stress and increased feelings of happiness and well-being. This is because concentrating on the postures and the breath acts as a powerful form of meditation. If you can breathe, you can do yoga, well-known Iyengar teacher Patricia Walden once said. Hence, yoga is becoming so popular today. Do you know what the biggest benefits of yoga are? Number 1. Improved Strength Routine and consistent practice of the various yoga asanas has helped people to build strength and improve lean muscle mass, most notably with respect to several muscle groups underutilized in chosen athletic disciplines of swimming, cycling, and running. These gains have enhanced core body stability and significantly impeded overuse injury by strengthening the supportive but otherwise underdeveloped muscles surrounding the more utilized muscles, creating a more balanced and optimally functional overall strength. Number 2 balance. Through a consistent yoga practice, you'll notice that your coordination and balance have improved immensely. Why is this important? Better balance and coordination means enhanced control over how you move your body, which in turn leads to better technique and form. Number 3. Flexibility. Yoga invariably improves joint and muscular flexibility, which is crucial to the body's overall structural soundness. Enhanced joint and muscle pliancy translates to a greater range of motion or an increase in the performance latitude for a particular movement or series of movements. For example, a swimmer with supple shoulder and hip joints is able to capture and pull more water than a swimmer with a more limited range of motion. The result is more forward movement per stroke as well as enhanced muscular economy. In turn, this increased range of motion provides a greater ability to strength condition a particular muscle group due to the amelioration in overall force that can be exerted with each movement. Number 4. Free Your Mind The ability to create a stress-free mind is a significant benefit of yoga practice. The physical practice is used as a tool to enhance breath control, which helps improve focus and concentration, allowing clarity of thought and clear decision making. It is a valuable tool in any sporting arena. Mental practice in any sport will teach you how to gain control of your emotional states so arousal levels and anxiety don't impede your performance. Number 5. Reduce Anxiety and Stress Yoga helps you reduce cortical levels and increase calming hormones, improve cognitive function, reduce blood pressure and heart rate, and increase immune function. These benefits combine to allow for better rest, sleep, and recovery, as well as provide the ability to think more clearly under pressure. Here are three tips for yoga practice. Number 1. Side effects and risk. Number 2. Things to consider. Number 3. Training, licensing, and certification. Let's talk about the side effects and risk of yoga practice. We all know that yoga is generally low impact and safe for healthy people when practiced appropriately under the guidance of a well-trained instructor. Overall, those who practice yoga have a low rate of side effect and the risk of serious injury from yoga is quite low. However, certain types of strokes as well as pain from nerve damage are among the rare possible side effects of practicing yoga. However, women who are pregnant and people with certain medical conditions such as hypertension, heart attack, or asthma should modify or avoid some yoga poses. Here are some things to consider when you've decided to practice yoga. If you're considering practicing yoga, do not use yoga to replace conventional medical care or to postpone seeing a healthcare provider about pain or any other medical condition. If you have a medical condition, talk to your healthcare provider before starting yoga. You should ask a trusted source to recommend a yoga practitioner. Find out the training and experience of any practitioner you are considering. Besides, you need to know that everybody's body is different and yoga posture should be modified based on individual abilities. Carefully selecting an instructor who is experienced with and attentive to your needs is an important step forward in helping you practice yoga safely. Ask about the physical demands of the type of yoga in which you are interested and inform your yoga instructor about any medical condition you have. Carefully think about the type of yoga you're interested in. For example, hot yoga, such as Bikram yoga, may involve standing and moving in humid environments with temperatures as high as 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Because such settings may be physically stressful, people who practice hot yoga should take certain precautions. 
These include drinking water before, during, and after a hot yoga practice, and wearing suitable clothing. People with conditions that may be affected by excessive heat, such as heart disease, lung disease, and a prior history of heat stroke, may want to avoid this form of yoga altogether. Women who are pregnant may want to check with their healthcare providers before starting hot yoga. There are many training programs for yoga teachers throughout the country. These programs range from a few days to more than two years. Standards for teacher training and certification differ depending on the style of yoga. There are organizations that register yoga teachers and training programs that have complied with a certain curriculum and educational standards. For example, one nonprofit group, the Yoga Alliance, requires at least 200 hours of training, with a specified number of hours in areas including techniques, training methodology, anatomy, physiology, and philosophy. Most yoga therapist training programs involve 500 hours or more. The International Association of Yoga Therapists is developing standards for yoga therapy training. Next, I'll share with you the eight different types of yoga moves for beginners. We have the warrior pose, tree pose, triangle pose, seated twist, upward facing dog pose, pigeon pose, crow pose, and child's pose. And here's how you do the warrior pose. First, stand with your legs three to four feet apart. Turn out your right foot 90 degrees and your left foot in slightly. Keeping your shoulders down, extend your arms to the sides with your palms down. Lunge into your right knee at 90 degrees. Keep your knee over your foot and don't let it go past your toes. Aim your focus over your hand for as long as you like, then switch sides. When doing the tree pose, begin with the mountain pose. Then shift your weight onto your left leg. Keeping your hips facing forward, place the sole of your right foot inside your left thigh and find your balance. When you're there, take a prayer position with your hands. To kick it up a notch, reach your arms up as you would in a mountain pose. Be sure to repeat on the other side. For the triangle pose, take the warrior pose on your right side without lunging into your knee. Then touch the inside of your right foot with the outside of your right hand. Reach up to the ceiling with your left hand. Turn your gaze toward and past your left hand to stretch your back. Don't forget to repeat it on the other side. For seated twist, first sit on the floor and extend your legs. Cross your right foot over the outside of your left thigh. Bend your left knee, keeping your right knee pointed towards the ceiling. Keep your right hand on the floor behind you to stay stable and place your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Twist to the right as far as you can moving from your abdomen. Be sure to keep both sides of your butt on the floor. Do this on both sides. When doing the upward facing dog pose, first lay face down on the floor with your thumbs under your shoulders and your legs extended with the tops of your feet on the floor. Tuck your hips downward as you squeeze your glutes. Keeping your shoulders down, push up and lift your chest off the ground. Relax and repeat. As for the pigeon pose, start in a push-up position, your palms under your shoulders. Place your left knee on the floor near your shoulders with your left heel by your right hip. Press your hands to the floor and sit back with your chest lifted. You can also lower your chest closer to the floor for a stretch. Try it on the other side. For the crow pose, get into downward facing dog position. Then walk your feet forward until your knees touch your arms. Carefully, bend your elbows and lift your heels off the floor. Rest your knees against the outside of your upper arms. Keep your abs engaged and legs pressed against arms. You can leave your toes on the floor, or if you're a pro, lift them off and hover. To do this, try to keep tucked tight with your heels close to your butt. When you're ready, push your upper arms against your shins and draw your inner groins deep into the pelvis to help you with the lift. When doing the child pose, sit upright comfortably on your heels. Roll your torso forward and bring your forehead to rest on the ground in front of you. Extending your arms forward, lower your chest to your knees as close as you comfortably can. Hold the pose and breathe into your torso. Exhale and release to get deeper into your fold. And there you have it, a simple to follow step-by-step -step guide for beginner yoga poses. In this video, we'll talk about fat burn mantra and how to eat like a celebrity and not get fat. Believe it or not, it's all about the mindset. If your body is a car, your mind is the engine. Your mindset drives your body, it fuels your will and determination to work towards your goal. It can be difficult to achieve and maintain your ideal body shape and weight. It takes more than just healthy eating and regular exercise. A positive and motivated mindset is essential to keep going. If you tell yourself negative things, this is so hard, I can't do this, you're not going to make it far. But if you encourage yourself with thoughts like, I can do this, nothing can stop me, I'm going to lose 5 pounds by the end of the week, you're motivated to achieve your diet goals. 
Mindsets are assumptions or beliefs that you establish to govern your behavior and choices. There are two types of mindsets, fixed and growth oriented. People with a fixed mindset think of the absolutes and allow little to no room for possibilities. They're fixated to their definite opinion and would not budge from that framed mindset. When faced with a challenge, they tend to take the easy way out to avoid failure and embarrassment. This is a psychological principle known as self-handicapping. People with a growth mindset strongly believe in possibilities. They're open-minded, willing to adopt new ideas, and learn to improve. They take on challenges even at the risk of failing. They're open to embrace failure because they know they can learn from it. To successfully shed fat, first shed your negative thinking. Research shows that one of the many important factors that influences weight loss is your attitude, whether or not you believe you can do it and if it is worth doing. It's a simple theory. What you think will affect how you feel and in turn the actions you take. Similar to how conventional medications often treat symptoms of disease without addressing the cause, weight loss diets often address your weight without addressing what has led you to be overweight. Being overweight is not as simple as eating too much or moving too little. There's an underlying combination of subconscious conditioning, self-worth issues, emotional difficulties, and more. You might be able to lose a couple of pounds by solely changing your diet and doing exercises, but it won't last long as symptom-specific diets will only be temporarily effective. Addressing the underlying psychological cause that led you to be overweight while applying a balanced diet and exercise will ensure you long-lasting weight loss. Follow these life-changing mantras that could help you eliminate any sort of destructive thoughts that sabotage your body weight. Others' opinions don't matter as long as I love my body. Eliminate the fear of others' opinions. When we despise how we look and how we feel, our bodies reflect and adopt these ideas. Due to the environmental conditioning, many people think they must be thin to really love themselves. It's all because of others' opinions. But loving yourself must come first for your weight loss efforts to be effective. Shed your fears. Learn to love your own body and each small change that occurs to it through your dieting effort. Slow and steady. Learn as you go. If you lose your fats too fast, it may not last. A little goes a long way. Focus on progress over perfection because no perfection comes along without long-term progression. Be patient and work with a well-planned diet for the long run. Your body takes time to adjust to all the changes. A diet done in the right way will ensure that your body will be accustomed to the changes and that the effects are definitely longer lasting. I may not be where I want to be, but I'm better than where I was. I don't have enough time. 15 minutes of workout won't make a difference. Sound familiar? This is the kind of statement that gives you permission to veer from the healthy habits that help you lose weight. Don't find excuses. A tiny effort done is always better than none. 15 minutes each day rather than none at all is still going to make a change to your body regardless of how significant it is. Always remember that every small step taken is a step closer to your goal. Never underestimate yourself. Now I'll share with you how to eat like a celebrity and not get fat. When you see photos of Rihanna's slim but glamorous silhouette or Jessica Alba's flat post-pregnancy tummy, you probably wonder how celebrities stay so lean and how they always manage to snap back into shape in the blink of an eye. Truth is, some celebrities go to strange and outrageous lengths to get or stay thin, even though most of them swear that their perfect bodies come from exercising and eating clean. It's risky to just blindly follow with those alleged diet plans of celebrities. But fret not, because here are some legit, useful, and healthy tips quoted directly from A-list celebrity trainers you could steal and not be wary of the risk. Tips from celebrity trainers. Number one, celebrities eat breakfast. Number two, they pick their veggies. Three, they snack. Healthy snacks, of course. And number four, they don't stop drinking water. Now, let's talk about the first tip. Celebrities eat breakfast. We all know the importance of breakfast, but there are still many people skipping their breakfast on a daily basis. Celebrity trainer Gunnar Peterson, trainer to Jennifer Lopez, Penelope Cruz, Leia Remini, introduced the idea of eating within 30 minutes of waking up in the morning. You want to send your body a signal that you're not starving, so it starts burning fat, says Peterson. Try oatmeal, scrambled egg whites, fruits. These ingredients provide filling fiber, protein, and vitamins. Research shows that breakfast eaters are more successful at long-term weight loss as it helps jumpstart your metabolism and prevents overeating throughout the day. Here's tip number two. Be picky in choosing your veggies. 
No, celebrities don't plan and pick their own veggies. They're taught by their trainers to be picky in what veggies they eat. Here's a tip to slimming down a few inches for a B-scene event. Nutritionist Carrie Wyatt made famous singer Fergie stock up on watery veggies and fruits. Lettuce, celery, cucumbers, watermelon, grapes. To help get rid of bloating as those veggies work by flushing out your system. Cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, and pears lead to gas and bloating. So if you'd like to be seen lean for the night, remember to avoid these right before an event. Tip number three, they snack. Healthy snacks, of course. Trainer Valerie Waters had her clients, Jennifer Garner, Elizabeth Berkeley, carry 150 calorie snacks wherever they go. A few all-time favorite snack combos include apple slices with low-fat string cheese, a couple of crackers topped with chicken salad, or a few slices of turkey ham with fruits. According to Valerie Waters, it's important to eat something every three to four hours because you can go from feeling kinda hungry to thinking you're starving badly as your blood sugar can drop quickly. Healthy snacking helps curb your cravings and gives you an instant energy boost to keep you satiated. Tip number four, they don't stop drinking. I, I hope you're not thinking about alcohol. Drink water. Of course it's water. They never stop drinking water. Celebrity trainer and nutritionist Harley Pasternak, whose clients include Lady Gaga, Rihanna, Megan Fox, Robert Downey Jr., urges the importance of hydration. According to Pasternak, thirst can often be mistaken for hunger, so regularly sipping water throughout the day can keep excess calories off your plate and your mouth. Now that you already know the four tips from celebrity trainers, let's move on to the three famous celebrity diet plans. The first one is the five factor diet. Created by nutritionist and celebrity fitness guru Harley Pasternak, the five factors consist of the elements each meal should include. Protein, complex carbs, fats, fibers, and fluids. This diet plan requires you to eat five meals a day with recipes of no more than five ingredients. And guess what? You get one cheat day per week, where you're allowed to eat anything you'd like. Celebrities like Ava Mendez, Alicia Keys, Megan Fox, and Katy Perry are the followers of this diet. The next diet plan is the Zone Diet. Developed by former scientist Dr. Barry Sears, this diet involves obtaining 40% of your daily caloric intake from carbohydrates, 30% from fats, and 30% from carbs. Sears created this diet based on balancing the correct amount of amino acids with carbs because it helps control your appetite and prevent overeating. You are to eat three portion controlled meals and two snacks a day. Famous Hollywood celebrity Jennifer Aniston was such a big fan of this diet, some even called it the Jennifer Aniston diet. And lastly, the Pressed Juicery. Pressed Juicery is a California-based company whose products are, in general, dense in nutrition, low in sugar, yet high in fiber, and are proven to be a sensible way of consuming calories. It has been widely popular among celebrities to follow this 6 juices a day, 1200 calorie intense cleanse. This pressed juicery diet is said to be a major bloat beater. Every morning you'll receive a daily supplement of juices delivered to your doorstep. Each fresh, nutrient-packed drink is specially designed to replace meals and snacks. And you're highly advised to avoid alcohol, caffeine, and nicotine in order to achieve a complete cleansing. Hollywood celebrity, and also a busy mom, Nicole Richie, sips on these juices. I drink these between meals to be sure I'm getting everything I need. I don't go a day without a greens juice. Kale, spinach, cucumber, celery, and romaine. It's actually really good, says Richie. Lastly, I'll share with you the star diet mantras and tricks. Now the Hollywood stars are spilling their secrets to their perfect body shape. Aren't you excited? Nicki Minaj's secret is no sugar or starch. She lost 10 pounds by giving up Snickers and sides of potatoes three days before a big shoot. Hilary Duff's secret is simply treat yourself. She does boxing drills and runs a lot. She eats a lot of chicken, but she rewards herself too. Kaylee Cuoco's secret is no alcohol. She skips alcohol for a lean body, claiming that alcohol bloats the body. She also works out four to five times a week, yoga, horseback riding, etc. Jennifer Lopez's secret is cardio all the time. She lost eight pounds by eating lean meat, broccoli, and carrots. Jessica Simpson's secret is oatmeal in small portions. She eats small portions of chicken and oatmeal. She also does strength training sessions three times a week. Miranda Lambert's secret is to have everything in moderation. She plans her daily intake. If her breakfast is high in calories, she picks a low-calorie dinner like grilled chicken and sweet potatoes. She still snacks on her must-have snacks, Cheetos, by doing daily hour-long cardio drills. 
Ashley Tisdale's secret is, again, breakfast. She always starts her day with fresh fruit, an egg white omelet, and whole wheat toast. And there you have it. All the secrets from top celebrities to start blasting those fats away. Hope these tips and tricks motivated you and encouraged you to start burning those fats away from your body. In this video, you'll learn about easy fat killer techniques. But before going into detail, let's talk about cardio. The word cardio is short for cardiovascular. Cardio workouts are endurance exercises that strengthen the circulatory system consisting of the heart and blood vessels in your body. People do cardio over long stretches of time as it makes the heart beat faster and pump more blood through your system, bringing nutrients and oxygen to every cell. Cardio workout can simply be explained as a physical exercise of low to high intensity that depends on the aerobic energy generating process of the exercise you do. It's any activity that gets your heart rate raised to 50 to 75% of your maximum heart rate. Calculate your maximum with the formula 220 minus your age. For example, if you're 25 years old, 220 minus 25 equals 195. Cardio workout burns calories in your body. Most people do cardio training to lose weight, gain body mass, train stamina, etc. There are different intensities to cardio exercises. Low or moderate intensity exercise normally leaves you feeling slightly breathless but still able to comfortably talk to someone. Low intensity exercises include walking, swimming, or cycling. On the other hand, high intensity exercises will leave you speaking in short sentences as you sweat and breathe rapidly. High intensity exercises include running, sprinting, aerobic classes like Zumba, or circuit training. It is commonly believed that long, slow, and low intensity cardio is best for fat loss as it utilizes aerobic exercises that burn fat during exercise. While some find high intensity cardio more effective for fat loss as it burns higher amounts of overall fat. So the question is, how do you know which one is better? Low intensity or high intensity? The short answer is that the best type of cardio, whether low or high intensity, is the one you will do consistently over time. The optimal plan is to start at lower intensity if you're new to cardio and slowly work your way up to higher intensities as your endurance and cardiorespiratory work capacity improve. The reason is because beginners doing high intensity training are highly prone to body burnout due to continuous hardcore training that causes strains towards your body, especially your muscles and joints. Burnout will leave you feeling extremely tired, cranky, exhausted, and too worn out to stick with your routine. If you're a beginner, try interval training. Warm up at a low intensity and alternate one minute of high intensity with one minute low, or you can call it recovery intensity. As you progress, you can then start to either increase the intensity or the duration of the high intensity part, or decrease the duration of the low intensity part. By doing so, you'll be able to burn more calories during the workout at higher intensity. Remember, losing fat is about burning more calories than we consume over time. Combining both LI and HI will contribute to hitting your weight loss goals faster. Remember to progress slowly with baby steps though. Doing too much too soon can lead to injury or burnout which can take you out of the game. Here are the advantages of both low intensity and high intensity cardio. Maybe you should screen cap this table for your future reference. It'll help you decide the best workout that suits your body best at specific stages. So now that you know the benefits of low intensity and high intensity cardio, I'll show you some examples of exercises for low intensity, moderate intensity, and high intensity respectively so that you have a rough idea. For low intensity, you can briskly walk, do some stretching routines, yoga, swimming, and some simple household chores such as vacuuming, mopping, yard work, or washing the car. For moderate intensity, you can do speed walking, cycling, basically up-leveling any low intensity exercise by a notch will simply work as a moderate intensity workout. For high intensity, you can do aerobic exercises, jump rope, high speed running or jogging, push-ups or jumping jacks. Now I've prepared a 10 minute beginner high intensity workout. Here's a little tip for a beginner HI cardio workout for you. Complete three sets of 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. First step. Jab, cross, front, right side. Stand with your right foot in front of the left, hips facing your left side. Bring your arms up into a boxing position. Jab or punch forward with the right arm, then throw a cross punch with the left arm, letting your body rotate as your left arm crosses over your body to the right. Your body weight should be over your right foot, with your back heel picking up off the floor slightly. Bring both arms back into your body, shifting your weight back to the starting position and facing front. 
This is the front move. Repeat on the left side. Second step, jab, cross, front, left side. Third step, jumping jacks. Start by standing upright with your feet at hip width apart and your arms at your sides. Jump your feet out while raising your arms. Repeat as fast as possible. If a regular jumping jack is too difficult, step side to side while raising your arms instead. Fourth step, sumo squats. Position your feet a little more than hip width apart and point your toes out at a 45 degree angle. Keeping your weight in your heels, back flat and chest upright, lower yourself until your thighs are parallel to the floor. Engage your glutes and quads and push back to the start position. Repeat. Cool down with an overhead stretch, reverse lunge and forward fold. All you have to do is follow the killer cardio plan. Using this workout schedule as a framework, you can easily add in any cardio exercise that falls into the corresponding workout style. In this video, we'll talk about fat burn supplements and detox plans. The majority of adults in the United States take one or more dietary supplements either every day or occasionally. Today's dietary supplements include vitamins, minerals, herbals and botanicals, amino acids, enzymes, and many other products. Dietary supplements come in a variety of forms, traditional tablets, capsules and powders, as well as drinks and energy bars. Popular supplements include vitamins D and E, minerals like calcium and iron, herbs such as echinacea and garlic, and specialty products like glucosamine, probiotics, and fish oils. The pursuit of health has never been more informed. We know more about the fields of medicine and nutrition than ever. Technological advances now allow scientists and clinicians to predict one's susceptibility to certain diseases or conditions by analyzing the DNA in cells obtained from a cheek swab. We know that the conditions a fetus is exposed to in utero can influence the risk of disease in adulthood. We've come so far in understanding the biology of our bodies and the biochemistry of the nutrients and other substances we ingest. The United States is recognized among the leaders of the world in technology and medicine. And yet, despite all these advances, Americans are unhealthier, more overweight or obese, more prone to chronic disease than ever. Where did we go wrong? All products labeled as a dietary supplement carry a supplement facts panel that lists the contents, amount of active ingredients per serving, and other added ingredients like fillers, binders, and flavorings. The manufacturer suggests the serving size, but you or your healthcare provider might decide that a different amount is more appropriate for you. However, there are things that you really need to know before you start consuming it. Number one, effectiveness. Number two, safety and risk. And number three, quality. Number one, effectiveness. If you don't eat a nutritious variety of foods, some supplements might help you get adequate amounts of essential nutrients. However, supplements can't take the place of the variety of foods that are important to a healthy diet. Scientific evidence shows that some dietary supplements are beneficial for overall health and for managing some health conditions. For example, calcium and vitamin D are important for keeping bones strong and reducing bone loss. Folic acid decreases the risk of certain birth defects, and omega-3 fatty acids from fish oils might help some people with heart disease. Other supplements need more study to determine their value. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, does not determine whether dietary supplements are effective before they are marketed. Number 2. Safety and Risk Many supplements contain active ingredients that can have strong effects in the body. Always be alert to the possibility of unexpected side effects, especially when taking a new product. Supplements are most likely to cause side effects or harm when people take them instead of prescribed medicines or when people take many supplements in combination. Some supplements can increase the risk of bleeding or if a person takes them before or after surgery, they can affect the person's response to anesthesia. Dietary supplements can also interact with certain prescription drugs in ways that might cause problems. Here are some examples for your reference. Vitamin K can reduce the ability of the blood thinner Coumadin to prevent blood from clotting. St. John's wort can speed the breakdown of many drugs including antidepressants and birth control pills and thereby reduce these drugs effectiveness. Antioxidant supplements like vitamin C and E might reduce the effectiveness of some types of cancer chemotherapy. Keep in mind that some ingredients found in dietary supplements are added to a growing number of foods, including breakfast cereals and beverages. As a result, you may be getting more of these ingredients than you think, and more might not be better. Taking more than you need is always more expensive and can also raise your risk of experiencing side effects. 
For example, getting too much vitamin A can cause headaches and liver damage, reduce bone strength, and cause birth defects. Excess iron causes nausea and vomiting and may damage the liver and other organs. Be cautious about taking dietary supplements if you're pregnant or nursing. Also, be careful about giving them beyond a basic multivitamin or mineral product to a child. Most dietary supplements have not been well tested for safety in pregnant women, nursing mothers, or children. Number 3. Quality Dietary supplements are complex products. The FDA has established quality standards for dietary supplements to help ensure their identity, purity, strength, and composition. These standards are designed to prevent the inclusion of the wrong ingredient, the addition of too much or too little of an ingredient, the possibility of contamination, and the improper packaging and labeling of a product. The FDA periodically inspects facilities that manufacture dietary supplements. In addition, several independent organizations offer quality testing and allow products that pass these tests to display their seals of approval. These seals of approval provide assurance that the product was properly manufactured, contains the ingredients listed on the label, and does not contain harmful levels of contaminants. These seals of approval do not guarantee that a product is safe or effective. Organizations that offer this quality testing include U.S. Pharmacopeia, ConsumerLab.com, and NSF International. For much of the 20th century, nutrition research focused largely on the health risks and benefits of single nutrients. The findings translated into public health messages telling us to reduce fat, limit cholesterol, increase fiber, get more calcium, take vitamins E, C, and D, and so on. But as scientists learn more, they're finding that the health effects of food likely derive from the synergistic interactions of nutrients and other compounds within and among the foods we eat. This has led to a shift from nutrient-based recommendations toward guidelines based on foods and eating patterns. There's no single healthy diet. Many eating patterns sustain good health. What they have in common is lots of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, along with healthy sources of protein and fats. Consistently eating foods like these will help lower your risk for conditions such as heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and certain forms of cancer. If you'd like to make this largely plant-based approach to eating one of your good health goals, well, here's how to get started. First, build a better plate. The healthy eating plate is made up of one half vegetables and fruits, one quarter whole grains, and one quarter healthy protein. Whole and healthy are important words here. Refined grains, think white breads, pastas, and rice, have less fiber and fewer nutrients than whole grains, such as whole wheat bread and brown rice. Healthy proteins include fish, poultry, beans, and nuts, but not red meats or processed meats. Many studies have shown that red meats, and especially processed meats, are linked with colorectal cancer and that you can lower your risk for heart disease by replacing either type of meat with healthier protein sources. So eat red meat sparingly, selecting the leanest cuts, and avoid processed meats altogether. Secondly, pile on the vegetables and fruits. Vegetables and fruits are high in fiber and contain many vitamins and minerals as well as hundreds of beneficial plant chemicals, or phytochemicals, that you can't get in supplements. Diets rich in vegetables and fruit can benefit the heart by lowering blood pressure, cholesterol levels, and inflammation, and improving insulin resistance and blood vessel function. In long-term observational studies, people who eat more fruits and vegetables have a lower risk of heart disease, diabetes, and weight gain, and those who eat more fruit also have a lower risk of stroke. Thirdly, go for the good fat. At one time, we were told to eat less fat, but now we know that it's mainly the type of fat that counts. The most beneficial sources are plants and fish. You can help lower bad LDL cholesterol by eating mostly polyunsaturated fats, including vegetable oils and omega-3 fatty acids found in fish, seeds and nuts, and canola oil, and monounsaturated fats in avocados and many plant-based oils, such as olive oil and canola oil. Saturated fats, mostly found in dairy and meat products, and trans fats, hydrogenated fat found in many fried and baked goods, boost LDL cholesterol and triglycerides, increasing your risk of heart disease. Worse still, trans fats reduce your good HDL cholesterol. Next, drink enough water. Many foods contain water, so you may get enough every day without making a special effort, but it can be helpful to drink water or other no-calorie liquids such as black tea, coffee, or carbonated water with meals or as an alternative to snacking. A reasonable goal is four to six cups of water a day. Finally, eat breakfast. It's easy to skip breakfast when you're in a rush, aren't hungry, or want to cut calories, but a healthy morning meal makes for smaller rises in blood sugar and insulin throughout the day, which can lower your risk of overeating and impulse snacking. 
Eating breakfast every day is one characteristic common to participants in the National Weight Control Registry who have lost at least 30 pounds and kept the weight off longer than a year. So, should you take supplements? In the 1980s, many nutritionists and some physicians began to recommend and take vitamin supplements. However, as described in Cast of Characters Vitamin A to Zinc, the evidence for the health benefits of most supplements is not strong. Notable exceptions are fish oil for cardiovascular disease and vitamin D for bone health. Although foods that contain vitamin A and beta carotene as well as vitamins B, C, and E are clearly good for health, taking supplements of these vitamins has no proven health benefits. Well, what about a simple multivitamin? These pills, which also usually contain multiple minerals, are the most popular among all dietary supplements. 50% of Americans take them on a regular basis, shelling out more than $20 billion annually on these products. On an individual basis, a daily multivitamin won't set you back that much. A year's supply of many popular brands costs about $30. However, despite widespread belief that multivitamins will prevent chronic diseases such as cancer and heart disease, there's no evidence to support such claims. The National Institutes of Health convened a meeting on multivitamin and mineral supplements in May 2006. The state of the science statement it issued was extremely cautious. Present evidence is insufficient to recommend either for or against the use of multivitamin slash multimineral supplements by the American public to prevent chronic disease. The experts noted that the heaviest users of vitamin and mineral supplements are Americans who probably need them the least. Those who are well-educated, have higher incomes, exercise, and already have healthy diets. A 2008 study in Archives of Internal Medicine that tracked nearly 162,000 participants in the Women's Health Initiative found that multivitamins have no effect whatsoever in 10 health-related categories, including cancer, heart attack, and stroke. Supplement takers didn't live any longer either. Here are some potential dangers of consuming supplements. Number one, potential pitfalls. Number two, more isn't always better. Now, let's talk about potential pitfalls. Shopping for any kind of supplement can be confusing. A staggering array of multivitamins and other supplements crowd the shelves of pharmacies, grocery stores, and specialty stores, and many more are now available over the internet. Before you buy, it's wise to realize that some of these products may offer much more, or possibly less, than you really need to enhance your health. Dietary supplements may legally contain vitamins, minerals, herbs, amino acids, enzymes, organ tissues, and a few other substances. In short, practically any ingredient promoted as a way to bolster your diet and presumably your health. The FDA does not certify supplements for safety or effectiveness the way it monitors drugs. Under the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994, the FDA cannot approve supplements or demand that manufacturers undertake rigorous studies to prove their worth. The FDA doesn't set potency or dosage standards either. Manufacturers are left to police themselves, and before a worrisome supplement can be pulled off the market, the FDA has to prove that it creates a significant health risk. This can be a problem, as is made clear by a January 2009 Consumer Lab report. The Consumer Watchdog organization tested the quality and contents of 29 of the leading multivitamin and multimineral products for adults and children sold in the United States and Canada. Eight products did not meet the claims stated on their labels or had other quality issues, while another 12 provided levels that may be too high for healthy people. For example, one men's multivitamin supplement contained just over 2,000 micrograms of folic acid, which is twice the safe upper limit for that vitamin. While supplement manufacturers can't legally claim to prevent, treat, or cure specific diseases, they can come pretty close. They're allowed to make structure function claims that sound impressive to most consumers. A product may build strong teeth or improve memory or boost the immune system. Manufacturers can make these assertions without supplying a stitch of proof to any agency. Your cue for healthy skepticism should be the words printed alongside, this statement has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Certain health claims backed by substantial scientific agreement and not limited to particular brands can appear on supplement bottles. For example, supplement manufacturers can advertise that calcium helps protect against osteoporosis and folic acid may prevent neural tube defects in fetuses because these statements are borne out by science and have been carefully evaluated. Also, more isn't always better. Many people who take supplements subscribe to the idea that more is better without carefully considering the arguments for or against their choices. They may take a handful of other supplements along with their multivitamin. At best, they may be wasting their money. At worst, they may be endangering their health. Take vitamins C and A, for example. 
Once your blood level of vitamin C reaches the saturation point, which occurs if you take about 200 milligrams per day, your body usually excretes the excess. That's why vitamin C toxicity rarely occurs. However, people who consistently take too much vitamin A won't be as fortunate. Because fat-soluble vitamins remain in the body, they can more easily build to toxic levels. A pregnant woman who takes too much vitamin A risks birth defects to her fetus. Excess vitamin A also compromises bone health and blood clotting, and it can overstimulate your immune system. Many consumers are spurred to take excessive doses by over-enthusiastic news stories on the potential benefits of certain vitamins and minerals. Remember, though, that the good news from the latest study may eventually prove true, or it may be refuted by other studies. Often, promising test tube and animal studies don't pan out in people, and certain types of human studies offer more definitive information than others. Sometimes, exciting results from initial observational studies aren't confirmed by randomized controlled trials, which are considered the gold standard of research. And even these studies often have their limitations. It's generally safest to wait for evidence to accumulate before jumping on the supplement bandwagon. Consider the potential risks, possible benefits, and costs. What about specialized supplements aimed at women, men, and seniors? While some of these supplements may be helpful in certain cases, others are merely marketing gimmicks designed to enhance profits rather than your health. Products vary wildly. Read the labels to make sure you get what you need while staying within safe limits. If you're a woman, which vitamins and minerals are most helpful for you? Well, that depends partly on your age and on childbearing concerns. Folic acid supplements are necessary if there's a chance that you could become pregnant, and iron is important for you if you're still menstruating. It's essential that you get enough folic acid to prevent birth defects called neural tube defects, which develop in the earliest days and weeks of pregnancy. Because not every pregnancy is planned, most experts suggest that all women capable of becoming pregnant take a daily multivitamin that has at least 400 micrograms of folic acid. Your doctor may suggest taking more than that amount if you plan to get pregnant and have previously had a child with a neural tube defect. To replace iron lost during monthly periods, you need a multivitamin or women's supplement with iron. Iron deficiency saps your energy, eventually leaving you weak and tired. In the United States, 1 in 10 women and girls who menstruate are deficient in iron. The recommended daily amount of iron for adult women ages 19 to 50 is 18 milligrams. If you're pregnant, you need larger amounts of certain vitamins and minerals, particularly iron and folic acid. Prenatal vitamins, which can be purchased by prescription or over-the-counter, meet these needs. It is important not to take other supplements unless specifically advised by a qualified healthcare professional. The earliest weeks of pregnancy are crucial in the fetus's development, so the sooner in pregnancy you start taking a prenatal vitamin, the better. If you plan to get pregnant or learn that you are, talk with your doctor right away to find out which prenatal supplement would be best for you to take. During pregnancy, your iron requirements increase to 27 milligrams and your folic acid requirement to 600 micrograms. The calcium RDA remains at 1,000 milligrams for women ages 19 and over, although some clinicians suggest adding calcium during pregnancy for extra insurance. As for women who reached menopause, unless your doctor advises otherwise, you can switch to a supplement that reduces or eliminates iron. Diet alone should supply enough iron and prevent a possible iron overload. Iron overload can damage the liver and other body tissues, making diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, and liver cancer more likely. Supplements designed for older women typically have little or no iron and more calcium and vitamin D. After menopause or a hysterectomy, you need only 8 milligrams of iron daily. Many experts shy away from any iron supplementation for men. That's because men, like women who no longer menstruate, aren't typically losing much iron. For that reason, supplements aimed specifically at men generally reduce iron or drop it from the formula. This can help prevent iron overload, which can stem from taking more iron than necessary through supplements. Iron overload may also occur because of a common genetic defect that occurs more often in men than women. Iron overload can damage the liver and other body tissues, raising the risk for diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, and liver cancer. Men's multivitamin and mineral formulations typically add or increase selenium and lycopene too, which may protect against prostate cancer and other types of cancer. Some drop calcium entirely. Formulas with low or no calcium are fine for men as long as they get adequate amounts of calcium in their diets to prevent osteoporosis. Exercise, coupled with vitamin D and vitamin K, is more important for bone health in men. Products aimed at older people tend to boost the amount of certain B vitamins, partly because many elderly men and women have trouble absorbing vitamin B12. These products also tend to add antioxidants and often vitamin D and selenium. 
There is little evidence to support the value of antioxidant supplements. Some experts recommend getting at least 2,000 IU of vitamin D daily after age 70. As you age, your skin loses some of its ability to produce vitamin D from sunlight, and many older people don't spend that much time in the sun. As for selenium, evidence suggests no benefit to this mineral. Until more information is available, or unless your doctor gives you other advice, a daily multivitamin should offer enough B vitamins. However, if you're over 70 and get little sun exposure, you may need to add a separate vitamin D supplement. Detoxification is a normal process within the body as it neutralizes and eliminates toxins through the major organs such as our colon, liver, kidney, lungs, lymph, and skin. Our bodies do it naturally every day. In fact, it's one of our most basic automatic functions, but what if our self-cleaning systems overloaded by our unhealthy lifestyle and exposure to environmental toxins? According to many healing experts, detoxification through special cleansing programs may be the missing link to disease prevention, especially for immune deficiency diseases like cancer, arthritis, diabetes, chronic fatigue syndrome, and candida. Our chemicalized diet with an overabundance of animal protein, too much saturated fat, and too much caffeine and alcohol radically alters our internal ecosystem. But even if your diet is good, a cleanse can restore your immune system and protect yourself against environmental toxins that pave the way for disease-bearing bacteria, viruses, and parasites. In the animal kingdom and in traditional cultures, routine fasting and allowing the body time to clean itself out has been a normal practice. Just think how many showers you take in a year to clean the outside of your body, and then how many cleanses you do in a year to clean the inside of your body. Here's a quick detox plan for you. On rising, take a large glass and add the juice out of one fresh lemon and crush a thumbnail size of fresh ginger. Fill the rest of the glass with room temperature or warm water. Before starting work and breakfast, mix wheat grass or barley grass powder and spring water to make a green drink to alkalize and energize the cells of your body and accelerate the cleansing process. It'll taste a little weird to start with, but as your bloodstream pH levels drop, your taste buds will adjust to the flavor. For breakfast, break your fast with a fresh vegetable juice of four medium-sized carrots, one beetroot, one cucumber, one handful of baby spinach, and one quarter cup parsley. Take 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C and two 1,000 milligram flaxseed oil capsules. Between breakfast and lunch, have a caffeine-free detox tea of peppermint, ginseng, licorice root, ginger, or chamomile, or a special natural laxative tea. More green drink as you need it. During lunch, have a small to medium serving of brown rice with a mixture of raw and steamed vegetables. Choose from broccoli, shiitake mushrooms, bok choy, radishes, rocket, spring onions, watercress, garlic, and ginger. Season with sea greens and flavor with one cup of miso soup or lemon juice and extra virgin olive oil. Take one 1,000 milligram tablet of vitamin C. In mid-afternoon, have another vegetable juice of carrot, apple, and ginger to boost your energy levels. For early dinner, have a freshly squeezed vegetable juice of two carrots, two tomatoes, a handful of spinach leaves, two celery ribs, half a cucumber, and half a green bell pepper. Add one tablespoon of wheatgrass or barley powder. Take one 1,000 milligram tablet of vitamin C. Before bed, relax your body with a detox tea of peppermint, ginseng, licorice root, ginger, or chamomile tea, or fresh mint and green tea with cardamom pods. And there you have it. Follow this program as closely as possible for a minimum of three days to really see the results. You can experiment with the vegetable juices throughout the day, but just make sure you're not adding too many sweet fruits. Ideally, none at all, as these add to the sugar or acidic load in the body, which is what we're trying to avoid during this cleanse. So, what's the recipe? 1. Detox meal consists of pesto mushroom and black olive tapenade. 2. Detox water consists of slimmed down detox water and watermelon detox water. Here's the recipe for pesto mushroom. 20 button mushrooms or 4 portobello mushrooms, 1 cup walnuts, 1 half cup pine nuts, 3 cups basil, 1 half cup olive oil, 2 to 3 cloves of garlic, 1 teaspoon of sea salt, and 2 tablespoons of lemon juice substitutes. You can use rocket to fill out the basil if you're short. And here's the cooking method. 1. Wash and stem the mushrooms and lay out on a serving plate. 2. Place all remaining ingredients in a food processor and blend until smooth. 3. Fill the mushrooms with pesto and serve fresh. 4. If desired for a more crispy taste, dehydrate for 5-6 to six hours. Mushrooms are one of the best natural sources of niacin, which is essential for energy production, brain function, and the skin. It also helps in balancing blood sugar levels and lowering cholesterol. 
Nuts, seeds, and their cold-pressed oils should be included in your diet on a regular basis as they contain high levels of the essential fatty acids, or EFAs, or good fats. Additionally, they're also a powerhouse of nutrients and contain high forms of digestible protein, antioxidant vitamins A, B, C, and E, calcium, magnesium, potassium, zinc, iron, selenium, and manganese. So what about black olive tapenade? Simple. Three cups of pitted black olives, one half cup olive oil, one small handful parsley, optional, two tablespoons lemon juice, three cloves garlic, and one tablespoon sea salt. Firstly, one. Process everything except olives in a blender or food processor until smooth. 2. Add olives and pulse until olives are roughly chopped. 3. To serve, use as a dip with flax crackers. Olives and olive oil are very rich in antioxidants. Antioxidants deactivate free radicals, allowing us to live longer, overcome illness, and maintain more acute mental and muscular faculties. Olives display antifungal and antibacterial properties and are used in a detoxifying diet. Garlic contains high doses of natural sulfur, or MSM. MSM provides elasticity, movement, healing, and repair within the tissues. It greatly enhances the structural integrity of connective tissue and joint cartilage and has been shown to reverse arthritic conditions including pain and inflammation. MSM is renowned as a beautifying nutrient, the best natural food cosmetic in the world. MSM, through its ability to continuously build and rebuild perfect collagen and keratin, is able to make our hair, nails, and skin shine with radiance. You can buy MSM on its own, which we recommend as a supplement to a healthy diet. The powder tastes awful, so we'd suggest the capsules. Parsley is a nutrient powerhouse containing more vitamin C than citrus fruit. It even contains vitamin B12, mostly thought to be only bioavailable in dairy and meat products. B12, apart from being found in parsley, is also available in blue-green algae and spirulina and is normally synthesized in the intestine when an abundance in healthy bacteria is present. B12 is needed in the body from making use of protein and helps the blood carry oxygen. Also, here's the recipe for slimmed down detox water. 1 half gallon spring water. 1 half grapefruit, sliced. 1 half cucumber, sliced. 2 to 3 mint leaves. 1 half lemon, sliced and one half lime, sliced. Simply combine all the ingredients in a pitcher. Allow the ingredients to chill in the refrigerator for one to two hours before serving. Drink throughout the day or discard after 24 hours. Here's what you need for watermelon detox water. Two cups seedless watermelon, cubed, and four cups of water. Firstly, place watermelon in pitcher and cover with water. Let it sit for a few hours in the refrigerator before drinking so the water gets all the nice watermelon flavor. Lastly, here's the recipe for raspberry and mint scented water. 2 liters cold spring water or filtered tap water. 2 tablespoons raspberries, fresh or frozen. 2 tablespoons fresh mint leaves. And 1 lime. To get more flavor and juice out of your lime, microwave for 30 seconds. When cool, slice. Place raspberries, mint, lime, and water in a large jug. Stir and serve. And there you have it. All the knowledge you need on supplements and a secret detox plan and recipes. Congratulations and well done getting into the inner circle of fat burn secrets. You've just made one of the best investments to kickstart or turbocharge your fat burn journey. You're definitely gonna love it. But your order's not quite complete yet though, so don't close this page yet. Or you'll lose out on your one-time opportunity to speed up your results. So before you go, here's my one-time offer. And don't worry, this video presentation is a lot shorter than the previous one. What I'm about to show you can increase your likelihood of breaking your old self and transcending into the strongest you in half the time. It's an amazing offer that'll go well with your new product. To study all the secrets in the book, you must first read through the pages. And I know this process can be extremely tedious for many. That said, many didn't get the results they desired because they gave up halfway through the book, and I don't want you to become one of them. What if I can show you a way to shortcut the process? A shortcut that'll cut half the time you spend on reading and gain 30 to 40% more results. Yeah, you heard that right. What I'm gonna offer you is the video course of Fat Burn Secrets. Look, video is one of the most impactful ways to transform your body. You get to learn more from this video course than the book because you have a voice that speaks to you, guides you, and visual graphics that show you how to perform the exercises. How cool is that? Plus, did you know that videos are processed by the brain at least 60,000 times faster than text? You get to internalize what you learned faster from the videos than from a book. 
What you read, you know. What you see, hear, and feel, you internalize and practice subconsciously. And here's exactly where the magic happens. Think of the book as a magnificent yacht to get to your dream body, while this video course is a supersonic jet that gets you to your destination in no time at all. Meaning, you can get more profound results in less time, and I really want you to see the value in this. Just so you know, this offer is not made available to the public, and I intend to keep this opportunity limited only to you and others who are committed to improving themselves. Also, it's my way of saying thanks for choosing me, and I think you deserve to get this almost exclusively. But remember, you get to see this offer only once, so if you click away or close this page, you won't get to see it again after this. And there you have it. Get everything you see on this page for a one-time investment only. Speak soon. I'm going to show you how you can lose those excess stubborn fats in your body once and for all in a safe and natural way. No diet pills, no crash diets, no powders, and it doesn't matter if you're a newbie or you've been a health junkie for as long as you can remember. You too can start shedding that ugly fat off your body and make way for a shapely lean body that you've always wanted. You'll find this to be a very satisfying experience when you start to see the positive changes in your body and discover how not only will you look, but feel younger and more energetic than before. First, let me ask you this. Are you horrified to discover that your metabolism rate and energy level aren't as high as they used to be? Do you easily experience fatigue or body burnout after just one session of training at the gym? Or putting on weight twice as fast as usual at an alarming rate? If your answer is yes to all of the above, then I've got something for you, because what I have here is a game plan on how to burn fats and lose weight the natural and healthy way. And in no time, you'll see just how easy it is to transform your body into a fat-burning machine and be the eye candy of those around you. This might just be the game changer that you've been looking for. Considering that you're tired of spending time and effort working out in the gym, you're frustrated of not being able to find clothes that fit you, you've tried all the tricks in the book, but still no positive results, you're looking for light and easy exercise routines that won't strain your body, you've noticed that your metabolism has taken a steep dive over the years, and there's no better time than now to start turning the tables in your favor. With your permission, I would like to introduce Fat Burn Secrets. This is the go-to master game plan for effectively melting off body fats. Finally, you too can get incredibly shapely hips and thighs and lean toned abs. You'll be the jealousy of your peers with your stunning figure and the envy of those to have set their eyes on you. When you get this game plan, here's what you can look forward to. Learn to choose the right cardio workout that suits the physical endurance of your body. Explore a variety of detox drinks that will surely give your system a good cleanse like never before. Get rid of love handles with Fat Burn Secrets step-by-step -step exercises, plus much more. At long last, you can start getting fantastic results by making smart food choices and staying active with the right exercise that suits your body endurance. Here's the good news. Getting this game plan won't cost you an arm and a leg. You won't need to be an experienced exerciser or dieter. In fact, if you feel you're a newbie right now, perfect. This blueprint is designed exactly for you. That said, I'll be letting go of the Fat Burn Secrets blueprint for an incredibly special price, but this offer won't last. So, what are you waiting for? Click on the button below to secure your Fat Burn Secrets game plan. I'm also backing my offer with a 100% satisfaction guarantee or it's your money back for the next 30 days. I'm willing to let this go at such an insanely low price because I want to prove my worth and value to you. So, there you have it. Click now on the order button. Do it today. You'll be glad you did.